In the last video, we learnt about Bernoulli's equation and that it tells us that the total pressure head in a fluid can either be in the form of elevation, pressure or velocity. And if we assume an ideal fluid and therefore that there are no losses in the system, we can apply Bernoulli's equation between two points. In the last lesson, we used this framework to work out the velocity of fluid in a pipe. And in this lesson, we're going to use it to work out the pressure at a certain point in a pipe. So let's consider an example. In this example, we have a tank with a constant head of 122 millimeters that's feeding a pipe. If we allow water to flow through this system, there's going to be pressure in this pipe. That's to say, water inside the pipe will be pushing against the wall with some pressure. In the tank it's easy to see this, as the water can find a free surface, so we can easily see how much pressure we have. In this example, we have 122 millimetres of pressure head. But in the pipe, we can't see the pressure because the water is just pushing against the pipe wall rather than finding a free surface. But if we drill a hole in the top of the pipe and install a gauge, the water can now find a free surface and we can see how much pressure we have in the pipe in units of millimetres. If I close the valve, all of the energy in the system is now either pressure or elevation, as there is now no kinetic energy as no water is moving. You can see that in the pipe, all of the energy is now in the form of pressure, and the pressure in the pipe is the same as the pressure in the tank. However, if I open the valve, the pressure in the pipe drops as some of the pressure in the pipe is converted into kinetic energy as the water moves and we get a velocity. And if I take the valve off the end of the pipe altogether and let the water flow unrestricted, we can see that the pressure drops to almost zero, as the majority of the energy in the flow is now in the form of kinetic energy in the velocity head. But if I set the valve at about half open, we can see that now some of the flow's energy is kinetic and some is stored as pressure in the pipe. There are all sorts of reasons why we need to know what the pressure is in the pipe, but the main reason is we need to know that there is sufficient pressure in the system at any given point to keep the flow moving. It's not always possible to drill a hole and install a gauge like I've done here, so more often than not, we need to be able to predict the pressure in a pipe rather than measuring it. So the question is, can we predict the pressure at this point in the pipe using Bernoulli's equation? The first thing we need to do is what we did in the last video, which is to apply Bernoulli's equation between two points in this system. So we have a tank with a water level of 0.122 metres and water flowing out of a valve on the end of a pipe leaving that tank. And we want to work out the pressure in that pipe at this point. So we can write out Bernoulli's equation between two points and then try and decide which two points in this system we're going to apply it between. The water surface of the tank is normally a good place to start for point number one, as at the water surface we know that pressure and velocity head are going to be zero, as all of the system's energy is potential energy in the form of elevation. So at this point in the system there's only one term that we need to consider, and all of the other terms will cancel out. Because we're trying to work out the pressure at a specific point in the system, we have no choice but for that to be point number two. So at the water surface of the tank, 
pressure is zero because there's no water above that point pushing down on the particle of water and velocity can be assumed as zero as even if the water surface is moving that velocity is going to be negligible compared to the velocity of water in the pipe. So at point one we only need to consider elevation and we can cancel out the other two terms. At the point where we want to calculate pressure, elevation is zero as the pipe is at the base of the system so there's no potential energy. But we do have two unknowns, the velocity and the pressure. But we can get the velocity by measuring the discharge using the volumetric method discussed in lesson 1 part 1 and then using the continuity equation to get our velocity. When measuring the discharge, I collected 0.81 litres and it took me 8 seconds to collect that volume. This gives a discharge of 0.1 litres per second and for my pipe with a diameter of 15 millimetres, that corresponds to a mean velocity of 0.56 metres per second. I'm not going to work for every step of this calculation as we looked at it in lesson 1 part 1, but this is my working out if you want to pause to see how I've done it. As this is a steady flow and the diameter of the pipe is constant, we know that the velocity will be the same at all points in the pipe. So now we have u2, the only unknown in the equation is p2, the point where we're trying to calculate the pressure. So we can simply rearrange Bernoulli's equation to get the pressure head at point 2. This gives us a pressure head at point 2 of 106 millimetres. If we look at the gauge, we can see that the actual pressure head is only 80 millimetres. So our calculation has given us a reasonable ballpark estimate of the pressure. However, it's clear that the actual pressure is lower than the predicted pressure. This is similar to how in the last video, the predicted discharge was higher than the actual measured discharge. Have a think why the pressure predicted assuming conservation of energy might be more than the actual pressure. And we'll cover this fully in lessons three and four. Now let's consider one final example. What happens if we put a bend into this pipe? This is now basically the same system as before, but we've raised the elevation of the pipe in the middle by 80 millimetres. So the pipe at point number two has an elevation of 80 millimetres or 0.08 metres. So for this example, I've set a flow and the water level in the tank is 211 millimetres. The pressure just before the raise in elevation is 207 millimetres and the pressure just after the raise in elevation is 121 millimetres. Let's imagine we only know the pressure at point number one before we've elevated the pipe. Can we predict the pressure at point number two just from this information? So let's apply Bernoulli's equation between point number one and point number two. And let's say point number one is just before the rise in the pipe and point number two is just after it. At point one, we don't have any elevation but we do have pressure and velocity. In this example, the system has a discharge of 0.046 litres per second and a velocity of 0.258 metres per second. So U1 and U2 are both going to be 0.258 metres per second. But as we're going to see in a few moments, we don't actually need the velocity in this example. So as we know the velocity, and we can read the pressure at point one off the gauge, we have all of the terms at point one. At 
point two, we have elevation, pressure and velocity. We know the elevation is 80 millimetres and the velocity is 0.258 metres per second. So the only unknown is the pressure at two. So we can simply rearrange the equation for the pressure at two. As we can see, the velocity terms cancel out and we're left with pressure head at 2 being equal to pressure head at 1 minus the elevation at 2. This gives us a pressure head at 2 of 127 millimetres. We can see that the actual pressure at point number 2 is 121 millimetres. So using Bernoulli's equation we've made a very reasonable estimate but the pressure at point number 2 is slightly less than the predicted pressure which is similar to all of the previous examples. In this lesson we've looked at Bernoulli's equation and we've looked at applying Bernoulli's equation between two points when we're assuming conservation of energy. In the first part we used it to work out the velocity, in the second part we used it to work out pressure. And we saw that this gave a reasonable estimate of these parameters, but the estimate wasn't precisely right. And the bigger we make the system, the less accurate the answer is going to be assuming no losses. So in the next lesson we're going to start to look at what actually happens in the real world and what effect friction and viscosity are going to have on our flow.